what's the which horse out of those ones was the biggest change from the first breeder's crown to the second like as far as their driving style or man we really had to work our way through this second breeder's crown to, to get that second to get, one. to get a second one um would it be like war we you i would probably say you viewed you know because she she, she had a tough season like uh, ariana g as a as a three-year-old i thought she was much the best mm -hmm. and I, as long as i you know don't get in trouble and i'll get her in a bad spot or whatever i thought she should get the job done Father Patrick, I said earlier, he was he was a little tired, yeah. but I still thought he was the best. You know what I mean? He's he was pretty easy to drive. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of not over racing him and stuff. But uh, uh, I would definitely take probably you Butte. You know what I mean? Because um, you know, like I said, she was tired. She was not one dimensional. You know, he was like, you know, you're not trying to be second over with you no know, you Butte because usually it wouldn't work. You know, so it was more about speed. And you know, you never know if somebody else wants to go speed. Now it's going to be a battle. You know, so she was definitely the one I think was more challenging. She's one of those horses that. Uh, Atlanta's one, you Butte's face. You look at a picture of just her face and the bridle, the mm -hmm. you know the the whole rigging that she's got. Because I'm sure, like you said, she's she does she lug down, she no, pulls, she just does everything that you don't want a horse yeah. to do. And to to make, uh, I think you compared her to a really crazy fast sports car. Yeah. Because she, those things, you know, the littlest thing goes wrong, but when you get it right, they are unbelievably fast. Yeah, and that's exactly what she is, you know what I mean? Like, she can, she could go f really fast for a long time. She could carry her speed long ways, and then, uh, but like, you know, once she got going, there was no stopping it, you know what I mean? You, once you press on that, that go button, then you were going. Yeah. ...that has seen her bank well over $1.3 million, and she'll be looking again for back-to-back -back crown titles. It's post time for this evening's fifth race. Gate picks up speed, fifth race field set for a start. Often pacing, Stonebridge Soul rocketing out of there. As t -Trick says go, Stonebridge Soul right to the front. Down the center, second away came Treacherous Rain. In at the railway, third is Sunny D. Were we you, Butte outside from it, fourth. Taken back into fifth is Tall Drink, Hanover. Sixth away, in at the rail is Beauty on the beach. Further back to be along seventh, Ideation, Hanover. Tracking in from an eighth is Philly, Hanover. Final two in the field are Queen of the Pride and bestseller, Hanover. At opening quarter, 25-3. and three. And as they go into the back stretch. Treacherous rain thundered to the front for Dunn. Here's pressure applied immediately as Warwi U Butte trucks on for Jingra, parked to three eighths and beyond. So Warwi U Butte on the outside takes one on the chin to make the front and she clears to the lead now. Back into second, Treacherous Rain sitting third, Stonebridge Soul, Sunny D fourth, fifth inside, Tall Drink Hanover. Right there with them sixth is Beauty on the Beach. She'll tip and drive and get the cover of Tall Drink Hanover's on the move for McCarthy at a 54 and 4 first half. Into the final turn. Where we you Butte leads the way. Second in that pocket spot, right up in the rigging is Treacherous Rain. Here on the outside comes her stable mate, Tall Drink Hanover now into third. She is second and she is driving. Stonebridge Soul to the rail fourth. Gapped on cover goes Beauty on the beach from in fifth now. Sunny D is sixth in at the rail. Three quarters clocked in 123 and one. And Warwi U Butte brings her dazzling speed into the stretch. She's clear by a pair of lengths. Second on the outside, Tall Drink Hanover. The rail third to Treacherous Rain. Fourth outside is Stonebridge Soul. They're in deep stretch. Warwi U Butte is still there by two. Second to the inside, Tall Drink Hanover. Stonebridge Soul to third. It's back to back. Crown titles for Warwi you Butte, she wins the three-year-old Philly pace by just over a length. Second up the rail, Tall Drink Hanover, and a closing third was Stonebridge Soul in 150 and two. Last year, uh, Peaky Sneaky, that was that was the one Breeders' Crown winner, and so now we're going back eight, nine years of just year after year after year with Peaky Sneaky. Like that was you had two favorites just destroying each other. You had Lion Sentinel and Party Girl Hill, and you're just sitting there in the two hole watching. It unfold is I mean it's not a spot you're really used to because you're usually one of the guys yeah. at, on front battling it out but when you have when you're following a horse like Party Girl Hill and then the other favorite is attacking her that's probably as good of a outcome as you can hope for right oh yeah I, I thought the only way I mean I, I wasn't going in there I'm not gonna lie thinking I'm gonna buy, beat Party Girl Hill mm -hmm. she'd been there on un, un, unreal you know what I mean like uh, but I did think that, you know, if I could be in the two old and Timmy was first up, that I could be second. You know, I thought that was the way of like trying to split those two anyway, you know, but then uh, 
they're going at it a little bit in the turn. But even then, I, I thought part of your girl hit the minute, like Dex will step on the gas, he's just gonna, no, just gonna hit another gear and leave me, you know what I mean? So top of the stretch, I'm waiting for him to like, no, to, to go, go yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, like mine still feel pretty good. You know what I mean? Like I'm not, I got, I'm not, maybe I'll pace with him. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be second anyway. Cause I figure I, at that point, I thought I had Timmy B. And then, but he never really did get going, you know? And I'm like, man, I got a shot here, yeah. you know? And then, uh, you know, obviously she came up with, no, Party Girl Hill came out a little short and Peaky Sneaky was really good that night and you know, it worked out good. As they uh, circle the far turn, Party Girl Hill leading by a length. Peaky Sneaky to the inside, waiting patiently there in second. And to the outside, Lion Sentinel in the contention now. She's third. Down on the pylons, Rocknificent. They reach three quarters and one twenty-one and three. Into the stretch, racing for home of the Breeders' Crown. It's Party Girl Hill leading the way. Lion Sentinel there at her wheel in second. Peaky Sneaky waits for the inside lane. Petty coat to business to the inside is Rocknificent. Now less than a 16th ago. To the outside, Lion Sentinel between horses. Party Girl Hill to the inside. Peaky Sneaky, Peaky Sneaky getting through to win the Breeders' Crown in a stakes record 149. Well, we'll kind of finish it off with Tall Dark Stranger. I mean, it's it's the only DQ in history, and I don't really, I'm not interested in the whole thing. It, it's, it's a DQ, it is what it is, um, but that horse, it's like every race, it's got to be annoying. Can't, can't we just win by five one time? Can't we just, can't we just one time stop letting horses buy you and, and, yeah. and come? But for a two-year-old to, to had every right to just stop. And like you said, you mean you can see in the video, he's yeah, he's coming back. Like that's happened three or four times before, and then it happened in the Meadowlands pace, and it happened a, a bunch of other times. It's like very rarely does a horse do that, and had every right to just stop. And yeah. he's like, no, I'm I'm good for tonight. I'm just gonna pack it in. Yeah, but that's just who he was, and nobody believed me that night, other than you know people that are, that knows the horse. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like he was 100% coming back, and then like you know, perfect example, like you just said, is the Madeline Pace. Mm -hmm. You know, Pappy Rob, he's a great horse. I think he's, he was super fast, but he did the same thing in the Madeline Pace. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, like we almost hooked again. Like he darted in towards me, and you know, so uh, but I was ready that night. I, no, yeah. I gave myself a little room. I was ready for for him maybe to come back. And, uh, but, you know, Stranger's just tough. He just wants to fight, you know what I mean? And uh, he got the job done most of the time fighting. You know, he just, you know, he likes to let, you no know, let them come to him. And then the minute he hear them, he would hit another gear. Pappy Rob got by me a couple of times because he was crazy good mm -hmm. horse, you know what I mean? And he was fast. Uh, he was probably quicker, you know, pure speed than Stranger was, mm -hmm. but Stranger was just tough and um, he was a winner. It, I mean, when you play a Madden game or a hockey game, there's, 40 attributes it's yeah. not just one it's yeah. not just speed exactly. it's got to be speed heart you know consistency yeah. gait you know straightness so, so all those things count for uh for, for how a horse is going to win exactly and all his attributes attributes are all there at the top right you know i mean no like i said speed might others might have a little more speed yeah. but the grit the toughness mm -hmm. the you know the gait he, he had it all was the three-year-old year last year he just gets beat one of the greatest Probably Breeders' Crowns ever. I know you're on the losing side of it, but as a fan, maybe you can appreciate how yeah. amazing that race was. There was seven across the track. Everybody's fanning out, and it's like, how does he, how how did he still get second? Like he should have. Again, he had every another horse would have been like, yeah, I'm good tonight. I'm gonna finish seventh. But no, he yeah. finished second, and just the horse that's way out in left field, you know, yeah. uh, stand between my toes, just comes in and nips him at the wire. Was that a race? Out of all the losses you've had, is that the one that's like, damn. Yeah. Damn. yeah, that one hurt because at the top of the stretch, I'm like, man, he doesn't have it tonight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, and like, you know, I guess like, but I was hoping that once they get to him, he'll go. You know, then halfway down the stretch, I'm like, I'm gonna not maybe get a check here. Right. I'm starting to look around and I'm driving on him and I'm like, there's a lot of horses. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then right down at the wire, I obviously I didn't see the other horse on, all the way on the outside, but I'm like, all the ones around me, I'm like, I, th I think I got them all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Think like, you're but, you know, but he, uh, yeah, he's just, you know, that one hurt, obviously, because he would have been capped off his incredible career. And then, um, <clears throat> but I think people had respect for him by then, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? People know how much of a fighter he was. And I mean, no, no disrespect to Sam Between My Toes. He, he won the race fair and square and, and congrats to them. Um, you know, I wish he was a little closer to me, but yeah. uh, you know, that's the ifs don't, don't change anything. Yeah. You know, we, we were second and, uh, but the horse raced great. It's the Breeders' Crown for three of the pacing Colts and Geldings, presented by Diamond Creek Farm.
a field of 10 as here's the stretch for the start. Here they come. And they're off in the Breeders' Crown. First away for the lead, Warwick Vital Cattle Wash right there alongside. Tall Dark Stranger comes out in third. No losing is hustled out fourth. Elver Hanover slipping through to the inside fifth. Manticore coming away sixth. Captain Barboza falls in line seventh as they step into the first turn. Save Me a Dance is eighth. They round the first turn, ninth of the inside, a sand between my toes, 25 and 3. A hot opening quarter here, set by Cattle Wash and David Miller. And to the outside, here comes Tall Dark Stranger. Tall Dark Stranger powers on by, taking command the nose, a neck of length. Cattle Wash on the inside, Miller yielding for the pocket seat in second behind the heavy favorite with Warwee Vital gapping third now. Inside to fourth, no losing. Fifth to the inside, it's Elver Hanover out and underway. Captain Barboza down on the pylons, it's Manticore and Save Me a Dance for the back sand between my toes. The half, 52 and three as they charge into the far turn. Tall, dark stranger a length. Cattle wash right there on his back into second as no losing moves into contempt. Attention third of the outside. He's just two off the leader now. And right there in his back, Captain Barboza. They pass the three quarters in one, 20 and three. They're in the stretch racing for a home with the Breeders' Crown, led by Tall Dark Stranger. To the inside, Cattle Wash now with racing room. No losing to the outside. Captain Barboza still a threat. Down to the inside, War of E, vital into the passing lane. It's a cavalry charge to the wire. Tall Dark Stranger under attack on the inside. Cattle Wash and a host of others down to the line. Tall, dark stranger. Cattle Wash and on the far side was sand between my toes. It's too close to call into the Breeders' Crown. Is there uh, another one that kind of sticks out that maybe, uh, I know you guys don't like to take any fault, but every once in a while, you, you know, the driver error, trainer error, horse error, is there one that sticks out and be like, hmm, I, when you rewatch that in your head, like I should have driven that a little bit differently. Uh, one, before I started winning those races, it might've been uh, maybe 2010, uh, Brian won with, uh, <clears throat> I think the name of the mayor was Arcotic. Okay. And um, I can't remember which year it was, but somewhere around that, because I think it was before I started winning. Yeah. And then uh, I'm in the two hole behind him. And then, um, well, all the credit goes to Brian on that one. But like, no, I just wasn't ready. I didn't have the experience I had. Mm -hmm. And I come to, I come out of the two hole and I, you know, I thought I was going to win. And then um, he just hit me, it checked me a little bit. You know, okay. gave me a little shoulder as I was, you know, about to go by him. And yeah. like, our fork just hooked as we we're just going through okay. it. And he won the race. I finished second. But, uh, you know, it was a great drive on his part and learning experience for me. Okay, so he, you think he did that on purpose? Oh, 100%. Okay, did. so, yeah. so and he, I've done it too. So okay, like, okay, you know, so just, that, you know, just but, a little hip. So it's yeah. something you learned and, and, yeah. and something uh, you've, I mean, you've got great experience now. And, and how long, uh, how old are you? You're 40? 40, 42. 42. So you see guys like, you know, like Dave Miller, who's 10, 12 years older. I like think 73 now. Right, 73. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> is, he, is he like the oldest of like, all the all you old geezers that are still driving at the the elite level. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know him and Brian are pretty close. I think he might be right. a little bit older than that. So, I'm not sure. does that give you confidence? Like, hey, this is a sport where I can do this at least another ten years at a super elite level, top level. Or do you want to go further? Is there like, do you, do you ever look at your future like that? Yeah, I, I'm not going to keep going until I'm a 60, 65. It's mm -hmm. not, not, some, not something I'm looking forward to do. Like, uh, I hope I'd still have another 10, 12, 13 mm -hmm. years from then. Like, uh, but at, you know, at some point when I'm 55 or something like that, I, I'd like to be able to, you know, slow it down a little bit. You know, maybe do it like David does, um, you know, once the kids are in college. Goes you know. in clean stalls in Florida. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know. But uh, man, I don't know about the cleaning stalls. You're, you're not going to, okay, you know, okay. But, uh, but I, I do want to enjoy life, you know what I mean? I do want to travel, I don't want to take, uh, I'm not going to be racing in the winters, you know, once the kids uh, mm -hmm. you know, are in college and stuff. But, but you know, hopefully, yeah, you know, uh, health willing and, and stuff like that. And obviously, if still have power to drive, you know, to keep going till I'm in my, my 50s for sure, yeah, another 10, 12, 15 years. 